Welcome to this session where we will see some Swedish examples on uh, popcorn plants. Um, quite a few uh, municipalities in Sweden have made feasibility studies now, and now we are going to learn some more about three of them: Uppsala, Södertälje, and Uppland's Väsby. And first out is Tom Karlsson, who is the managing director of street and traffic in Uppsala. City. Uh, our office runs streets, building maintenance of streets, and uh, at least this year we're responsible for public transportation uh, within the city of Uppsala. I will come back to that and comment that later. I will tell you about uh, why Uppsala wants to do this. Uh, the bit about the scope, and finally, what we have to do, next step to make, to get this done. Good. First of all, to show you where we are, we are in Stockholm. Uh, Uppsala is 80 kilometers north of Stockholm, commuting distance, 40 minutes by train. We are one of the four big cities in Sweden. Right now the fourth, but perhaps the third. I don't know if anybody from Malmö here. But we're soon the third. <laughs> uh, we're a growing city. Hans told us yesterday Stockholm is growing rapidly and, and by percentage it's the same in Uppsala. It's about three, four thousand new inhabitants every year. And actually, next month, we will welcome number 200,000. I hope there will be a celebration. Uh, we have great history. We can count back to at least 11, 1200 years. Uh, the church was built in the 13th century. And uh, we have a new master plan, or comprehensive, comprehensive plan, I think it's called in English. Uh, I will point out just the one, the target below. Uppsala is almost carbon neutral. The year 2030, we have decided to be almost carbon neutral. And that's one of the overall targets that we aim for. Uh, transferred to, to this public transportation targets, it means that we are will increase the number of journeys in public transportation by 100% until 2020. <coughs> the last three years we, we are about to 7 or 6% increasing, still needs 8%. So we have to do something more than just tell people to go by the buses we have. 
We said no non carbon fuel 2020 in public transportation. And we also say what we plan the society, the new people who come. Uh, we plan the city so we can run BRT. It's, but we think, we think about trams, but we will run buses, make space for trams in the future. Uh, the targets today we have about 15%, fairly near 15% who goes by public transportation, 45 by the car, and 20 and 20 cycle walkers. The target is 30% uh, by public transportation and 30% by car, and then 2020, 1% by rollerblades. No, what to do. <laughs> uh, it, it's a tough target, and we has to have to do something more, as I said, and then hold it by buses. I will present for you, someone has seen this before, but I think you don't, you don't have seen this before. It's a new angle of our project. We will build the first solar-powered public transit system in the world, actually. It will be the longest solar energy uh, in the world. It's been six kilometers or something. Uh, I think you, you should be surprised when you see those pictures. Because last winter, the total amount of snow falling over Uppsala was 3.4 meters. Anyway, we think we can run this in solar energy. It's very simple. During the summer, we get more <coughs> energy of the system than we need, and we put it on the bank. And then in the winter, when we need it, we go to the bank and take it back. I can guarantee that this bit, perhaps we even get more energy than we need. This is the scope. We will build a four kilometer track. We will combine the traveler center. The traveler center is the station where about 40,000 people travel every day to Stockholm and back and the other way around. Uh, people come by buses. So the traveling center combined with hospital areas, university areas, uh, science parks and so on. And we have about 30,000 workplaces in this small area. And uh, we don't think people have to walk m longer than about 200 meters to reach the workplaces from the stations. Uh, it spans over several barriers, a river and two or three roads, or actually under one of the roads. That's one of the benefits of this system. You can go over the roads or under them. And as I said, the longest solar energy system in the world. I will go rather rough, roughly through, I have three pictures showing you details. Uh, as you see, every station, at every station, we have contacts with either the community or uh, governmental administration or other others. We think that have a pointer. Is there a pointer somewhere? Um, no. example of how we think. Uh, we're planning to build a new football stadium and uh, of course under the spectator stalls they're building offices 
under the under the what you call it, plan, we will build a parking lots. And why not have a station there? Uh, perhaps not to get uh, 20,000 spectators to and from, but, but to, to reach those offices, to reach those parking places, or the other way around. You come by your car, park it, pay for it, and then go free to the city center. This is the way to think in, in all in all of, of, the, of the stations. For example, uh, this, <coughs> this is the new entrance at the hospital. Of course we will be, build a new station there, together with the hospital. Uh, they finance it, the stations. Uh, we build the track, so so it's it's a win-win concept. In every point you can see here, it's a win-win. We have about three or four or five several interests who, who, who thinks the same. I show the, this picture because uh, you can here see the first uh, pilot track that was built. That's the, that's the track that Vectus had run in 2006, I think. And perhaps we have to throw you out, if you're here, because that's the perfect spot to, to have a, a, a depot, a garage. What are the benefits? I have a list of benefits, not a list of problems, because there are not any problems. <laughs> <coughs> they are all very small. Well, as I told you, we are breaking barriers in the city. We create new patterns for public transport. This is a new pattern, of course. We can increase commuting between Stockholm and Uppsala. And, and in that, I mean, more people want to come to Uppsala for work. Today, most of the people go from Uppsala to Stockholm to work. But this, this will attract, this area will attract more to work here, so the commuting will increase, we're certain of that. We can develop, and develop all the hospital area, we can have stations inside, we can use the track for internal transport in the, in the hospital area, uh, and the same with the, the science park, <coughs> the two science parks. Uh, and the last point, it is energy self-supported. Uh, I'll give you some figures before I give you a short uh, calculation. Today we have about two or three or four million, two two point four million journeys in this area, and we think about six seven thousand per day in this area. <coughs> According to our targets, we will reach 100% increase in the, in the next 10 years. That means about 12, 13,000 journeys in this area. It means 4 million per year. And the system can take 8 million, theoretically. Then we did a calculation of 4 million journeys. The investment is about 70 million euro. Those who counted on it said 50, 55. As I am a bit careful, I said put 30% down, and that's 70 million. So it's on the secure side. It gives a capital cost of 4.5 million per year, 20 years, and 4%. Operating cost 2.5 million. And when we did this, we were taken in consideration that we still pay for the energy. Though it's, it's self-supported, we have in the calculation paid for it. So, so it's on the safe side. That gives a total per journey of 1.75 euro. And we know that the system we have today, basically buses or, or, or only buses, is about 3.4 euro. It's all part of the price of today's cost. Of course, 
3.4, there are 50% subsides, and 50% is paid by the traveler. It's a good business. It's a very good business. What do we have to do now? We have, we have a good scope, we, have, we know what to do. Rather, we have, of course, we haven't made the designs and so on. But uh, it's a good scope. And what, we have, what we have to do is anchor this. We have to anchor it with the politicians. Of course, some of them are already on the track. Uh, we have to do it with the industry, the property owners. And many of them are very interested in this because they can they can see the benefits, the versus the value of of, of their projects. It's very important to anchor it with the public, not only to get the people to travel with it, but also to accept it, to get this. It's a new thinking to have this in the sky uh, and others. Uh, I should mention one of, of the problem. I said there was no problem. <laughs> the, one of the problem is that we have a new organization for public transportation in Sweden. As I said today, the Uppsala city has their own public transportation. But after the new year, it's a new, it's a new the region government who is being responsible for it. Uh, of course, we will be responsible for the infrastructure, but those who will run the system is the new regional government. So we have to speak to both those to get decisions to go further. That has delayed this a bit, but I'm, I'm certain that we will manage. Thank you.